Pig farming is the most common form of animal husbandry that's practiced today. With over 36% of the world population consuming pork and demand skyrocketing in the past few years, pig farming is a growing form of livelihood for landowners or business enthusiasts. Historically, farm pigs were kept in small numbers, mainly farmed by the owner of the house in a small pig pen, being fed the household waste. But today, the outdoor pig pens are long gone, replaced by high-technology crates and pens that house hundreds or thousands of pigs at a time. The world has changed, and so has the method of pig farming. In today's video, let's forget all that you knew about pig farming in the past and start anew. We'll take you through the whole process of modern pig farming and tell you in detail what has improved. But before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. There are lots of options for pig farming, but the one that's most popular today is intensive commercial farming. Farming pigs only to be sold to a contracted company after they're ready. This method is the most convenient and cost-efficient, allowing one to farm thousands of pigs at once. But before that, they need to have that amount of pigs, so let's go through the basics and start with reproduction. Reproduction is a tricky business for the big farms that are based on commercial use. They need to produce fast, and the chances of reproduction through natural means are very fickle, so the procedure of artificial insemination is very popular in farms today. The farmers collect the semen of a boar, a male pig, and then insert it into a sow, a female pig, with the help of a pork stork. This allows a total of 30 to 40 females to be impregnated by the same boar. Farmers take extra care during the uncertain time between insemination and pregnancy, but once the female pig is pregnant, it's a whole different story. After being confirmed pregnant, the sows are moved to the gestation barn. It's a highly effective separation crate made entirely of metal. The whole room is filled with hundreds of crates, one for each pregnant pig, and they spend their whole pregnancy period here. This method is highly effective for a safe birth, and though many activists have raised questions about animal cruelty and many states have banned them, this still remains one of the most popular methods out there. Throughout the pregnancy period, every individual sow is looked over with special care to monitor them for disease. To ensure that the pig and her baby are healthy, they give them multiple supplements mixed with their food and drinking water. A few days before they're about to give birth, the pregnant sows are moved to the farrowing unit where she, along with her litter, will stay for four to five weeks after the birth. The farrowing unit is a small pen with a central cage designed to allow the piglets to feed from their mother. The room is small enough not to allow any moving space for the sow or the piglets. The central cage doesn't allow her to move in case she ends up crushing one of her babies or becomes aggressive. From furrowing till weaning, piglets rely on their mother's milk to keep them healthy. But because the sow's milk is low in iron, regular injections are given to the litter to ensure healthy growth. The iron shots are very important because the pig's body lacks iron and its first milk fails to provide a number of antibodies and proteins the newborn piglets require. The litter also gets a vitamin D supplement to make up for the lack of sunlight. Even with the utmost care provided, some piglets don't make it to the weaning age, but those who do survive are immediately subjected to earmarking and tattooing identification. After getting their identity, they also have to get their tails docked and teeth clipped in case they developed a habit of tail chewing, aggression, or cannibalism, which happens often in these enclosed spaces. The piglets that are set for the slaughterhouse have to get castrated before they reach their sexual maturity. The farmers say it affects the quality of the meat if it's avoided. Piglets grow fast and with the right care and nursing from their mother, they weigh more than 10 pounds within the first three weeks. They stay with their mother for about four to five weeks before they're ready to move to their big boy pens, aka the nursing barn. Hundreds of piglets are moved into these units where they will stay till their maturity. This method is done keeping in mind that the pig shouldn't be stressed in any way. The barn is a large building space that is temperature monitored and airy, two of the main things pigs require to grow healthy. It consists of a series of pens and has automatic feeder machines, which release the designated amount of food at every meal. They also provide a hefty supply of drinking water. 
The piglets now grow heavier each day, and soon they're fit enough to go to the finishing barn, the centralized barn for older pigs. They stay here until the day they're ready to be parted. Now that we have a healthy group of pigs, it's important to monitor them throughout the final stage. It's here where they really need to grow big and healthy. This actually requires less manual labor than you'd think. The entire area is modernized. Machinery does all the work here, from feeding the pig to weighing them. They're kept here for a few more months, where they reach their full potential by eating their feed and supplements. What they eat wholeheartedly contributes to the health of these animals, and they're normally fed a combination of grains and protein sources. Their feed can be bought packaged, in bulk, or mixed on-site. The big farms opt for the third choice. Having big mixing machines to cater to their needs, this is where they mix food and supplements before loading them into the automatic feeder. They also mix their medicines here to ensure the pigs are free from any disease. The pigs that are sick are immediately separated from the herd to avoid further spread. Pigs stress very easily, so they must be handled with care because they can even die if the stress really gets to them. The sick pigs are treated by vets or are given medicine prescribed by one. The medicine is often mixed with their water or food source. The pigs are now given feeds according to their weight. This highly modern machine comes into work, which weighs the pig and feed for him. The pig is then given a calculated amount of feed, and off he goes to sleep. This machine combines two important processes and manages everything on its own. In the final month, the pigs are divided into three categories, grower feed, finisher feed, and target feed. When all the pigs are over 100 kilograms, they are finally ready to be released. The farmers test the quality of their meat before they're shipped off to the slaughterhouse. Going hand in hand with the farm, slaughterhouses these days have also upped their machinery, and while there still is a majority of manual labor here, the machines make the whole process less messy and more sanitary. Say goodbye to the horror image of the slaughterhouse you've seen in the past. This one has little to no blood and gore on display. Still, watch at your own risk. When the pigs arrive at the slaughterhouse, they're kept in large pens where the vets check them for their health and fitness. If a pig is not found to be healthy, an additional checkup is conducted before the slaughter. The process of the slaughter itself consists of several different sections. First comes the larage systems, where the pigs are kept before they're guided into the stunning pen. The stunning pen has a CO2 stunning system that is used to make them unconscious to ensure that the further process will be painless for them. Then there are the killing lines where the pigs are slaughtered before they proceed to the scalding process where the pigs are put into scalding hot water. This process kills off all the germs and bacteria. The bodies are then placed into a de-hairing machine which removes all the hair from the pigskin which was already loosened from the scalding process. After the head is removed from the body, the carcass is graded for trade and tagged. Next in line is the automatic pork cutting machine. They can be classified into two parts, one which opens up the carcass from the front and the other finishes the job by cutting it from the back. The final process of cutting the carcass is the divider, which entirely divides the pig's body into two halves and is left in the cooling channel. From there on, the machines and man work together into getting the pork ready for shipping. The machine works to strip the pigskin, which will also be sold. It may sound weird and gross, but the majority of pigs are provided for us to eat as food, but there's also a demand for their skin, fat, and other materials. They are used for clothing, ingredients for processing foods, cosmetics, and medicinal use. The pork is cut into many different pieces, all of which will be labeled and sold differently as ham, bacon, sausage, and pork. This process mainly requires manpower as the fats and some pieces are cut by the workers. The final product is sent to the lab for one last testing before it's approved to start packing. Every year, millions of metric tons of pork are consumed all over the world, boosting this type of commercial farming. The demand seems to grow as the years pass and has no signs of stopping. Did you know that China consumes 50% of the world's pork production on its own? Not just that, it's also the leading producer in pig husbandry, and they're also the biggest importer. Pig farmers are thriving, and the market seems to love anything that's produced through pig husbandry. Now that you've seen the inside view on how things are done, what do you think about it? Let us know in the comments. And thanks for watching!